Hello, and welcome to Cardiff Castle. I'm Deborah Harkness, the author of The Discovery of Witches and the All Souls series. I'm Lachlan McKinnon, an executive producer of The Discovery of Witches. I wanted to welcome every one of you to our online panel for Comic-Con. We're all really sorry that we can't be with you, um, but that's COVID for you. So what do we have coming up? We've got a sneak preview of a teaser for A Discovery of Witches season two. We're gonna give you a sense of some of the history that surrounds Matthew and Diana on their journey through the, through the second series. And we'll be giving you a behind the scenes look at the costume and set design that provided the perfect background to bring our period to life. And of course, we're gonna cut away to our wonderful cast who are gonna do a Q&A with some of the questions you provided. Um, so in the cast panel, we have uh, Teresa Palmer playing Diana Bishop, Matthew Good, who's playing Matthew de Clermont. We have Ed Blumel playing Marcus Whitmore. We have Adele Leons who plays Phoebe Taylor. And last but not least, Gallo Glass played by Stephen Cree. In the meantime, we have a sneak preview of the trailer for season two. We'd also love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. An ancient prophecy. It tells of a witch who will change the destiny of all creatures, will alter our understanding of life. She will arrive this night, our fearsome witch. We arrived here in 1590 from centuries in the future. Neither of us are getting back home unless I find the right teacher. She is England's most powerful witch. Just let the power move through you. The whole world is in your grasp, Diana. We need to locate a lost book. It contained a secret method for obtaining immortality. What are they planning? Events are in motion that threaten the future of our family. I'll be dragging you through a war. I can handle the journey. Dark times are coming. It's time to choose your side. Wasn't that trailer amazing? As you can tell, the second series is based on the second novel in the All Souls series, which is Shadow of Night. And it sees our cast traveling across 16th century Europe and also checking in with the characters that we know and love from modern times. A Discovery of Witches season two is a Sky original and will be screening on Sky One and Now TV in January, 2021. And soon thereafter, it will be broadcast in the US and Canada on the AMC networks, Sundance Now and Shudder. We wanna thank our fans around the world for tuning in to the show and watching it wherever you are. And on Sky One, it was their biggest drama in 2018. So thank you all. Season two is going to be 10 episodes instead of eight. And we see Diana and Matthew time travel to Elizabethan London. Diana has to go on a journey to find the teacher for her magic, as well as to find the Book of Life. Season two sees an array of new cast joining the series, including James Purefoy, Sheila Hancock, and Stephen Cree. And they'll be joining our regulars, Alex Kingston, Owen Teal, and Ed Blumel. So should we talk about the history? Yes. All right. So one of the problems uh, or the challenges really that was facing us in series two is that we had to essentially recreate Elizabethan London because very little of the Elizabethan city actually survives. Yeah, so the first step in the process was, um, it was actually a trip with Deb. We all came down to London, um, the writers, um, there was the production designer, James North, who's a genius as you'll see. 
uh, and the art department team. Um, and Deb took us on a tour of the old city of London so that we knew exactly the territory we were going to be in on the series because we then, as Deb was saying, had the challenge of how to bring Elizabethan London to life because so little of it exists. Yeah, so I got to be a little bit of the Pied Piper and lead people around the sort of twisty, turny streets that exist just um, on the riverside uh, by St. Paul's Cathedral. Um, but the problem wasn't just about London. I mean, it seems like, okay, well, that would be your biggest challenge. It wasn't just the city. It was recreating all of the precise details so that they looked really authentic. So they've replicated a very well-known automaton uh, that was produced in Augsburg workshops in the 16th century. There's copies of this in museums all over the world. Getting the letters right, the wax right, the parchment right. And of course, we have Ashmole 782 itself, which had to be replicated, uh, not just a page or two, but many more of them. So it was an amazing challenge, I think, for our, our set design team, led by James, by the people who worked in the art department, uh, by the people who worked on the props. And then once you got the city and all of these material objects made, at that point, we had to turn to costume. And we had an amazing team, that, led by Sarah Arthur, Right down to Pip, who's the cutter who was responsible for all of the material being cut together. And, the, and Sarah sourced the material and it came from various workshops abroad um, because she was desperate to get every single detail as correct as it possibly can be. And that involved many conversations with Deb in terms of the shape and the styling. And also working with Teresa, for example, um, to make sure that she feels as comfortable as she can be within her dress. Uh, or with Matthew, he adored his leather jacket and trousers which you'll get to see. A leather jacket, which we should say, was an exact replica of one that is in the Museum of London. So it was down to the actual meticulous stamps that were made in the leather and the holes that were made in the leather. So it was like going, whenever I got called to the costume department, it was like going into Santa's workshop because there were just bolts of fabric and thread and the sound of machines. It was just an amazing process to watch all of that. And also looking at the, again, looking at London. Um, and one thing that really struck me was this, the real sense of claustrophobia when you're walking through the streets and they almost kind of cave in on each other. So that was something that we really lent into um, in the design of uh, what was actually built in a farmyard in Plasmacken. So uh, not far from Cardiff. So who ever thought we'd be recreating Elizabethan London uh, not too far from Cardiff? And when you heard from the, from the art department and from James North about, you know, well, we found this farm and my heart sank. And then he said, don't worry, wait until you see it. And the first time that I walked through the Plasmachan set, I will never forget it. I've studied London my whole life. And for the very first time, I really did feel like I was actually walking the streets of Elizabethan London. So it's an amazing experience. And it, and it was such a team experience because it was not only uh, James North, it was costume, it was makeup, uh, it was props, it was the assistant directors and corralling all the extras who would walk around the streets. Uh, and right back at the beginning, we had a, a meeting uh, where, where Deb came in to talk to costume makeup uh, design uh, the ADs to make sure that when we're picking all the extras for the set that they were period appropriate uh, and looked as good as they possibly could be and also each of them had a role in life so that you'd see the different uh, almost class of people uh, walking through the streets and in taking it to the next level Farron Blackburn who was the lead director um, he worked very closely with Steph Corrin our VFX supervisor uh, because a big part of bringing London to life was not only in the small streets but it's really giving it a sense of scale uh, so we worked a lot with Steph and with Deb, just trying to make sure that we had that real strong sense of London feeling so different from what it is today uh, because it just it transformed. It looks like uh, another, well, it was another world. Yeah. Um, so getting all of that uh, right was so important to us. So as you'll see from, we've got a little example um, and you can see the before and after. So you'll see what was actually shot in, on, in camera and then followed up by a wipe through which shows what Steph, the VFX supervisor, had, has added with his team uh, to give us as much scale as we possibly can um, within a back lot which is in a farm in Cardiff. As you can see from the clip, we have our set and what was shot by the camera uh, on the day. So generally that's the ground floor and some of the tops of the sets and we've got Matthew and Diana in the centre of frame. But what Steph did was add a completely new layer to that in conjunction with Farron, our lead director for season two. 
Um, and he's added in the various layers because it gives you that real strong sense of claustrophobia as you get higher up uh, into the buildings in Water Lane where the Heart and Crown is set. And you can see the way it connects with the rest of the city as well. So you've heard from us, now it's time for us to hear from you. So I've got the book of questions, Ashmol 57 turns out to be the book of questions. And we've got some questions from some of our most avid fans. So this one's for you, Lachlan. Demon's Domain asks, what was the biggest challenge fitting Shadow of Night into 10 episodes? Crikey, where do I start? I mean, I think the, the very first point is the fact that the book is just so rich uh, in story. Um, and in many respects, that's the reason we went from originally making eight episodes to 10 episodes, because what we realized is that the book itself, I mean, the, by, the, by far the majority of the story is set in Elizabethan times, but we obviously have the most stellar and amazing cast uh, in the contemporary period. So we felt that we needed two exclusive episodes and actually two and a half exclusive episodes that were set in the present day. Um, so we worked with Deb on story um, that we could make that all happen. So that we, you know, we, we keep in check on what's happening with Sarah and M. Uh, we keep in check with Marcus and Phoebe. Uh, with, um, so it, it's, it's just really making, that was the biggest challenge in a way. Absolutely. Uh, Jessica asks, was it difficult combining the period and modern elements of season two? You know, I, when I think about it, I don't think about what I've seen, it just looks completely natural and kind of seamless, which of course it wasn't. Um, but it's, it's really true that I think we, um, you know, in the novels, everything's from Diana's point of view. Yeah. And then there's these little kind of brief aways, but the adaptation really gave us the opportunity to delve into, yeah, but okay, what's really happening? At, you know, meanwhile, it's that tour, what, what's actually going on? So for me, it actually felt more true to the story in my head, because obviously for me, as the writer of the novels, I had to know where everybody was, even if nobody else did. And, and so when I see it, I feel like it's somehow, you know, you've been in my brain and you've seen what I got to see. Christine asks, what new character were you most excited to meet in season two? Gosh, that's like picking your favorite child. I know, there I mean, were a couple of questions like that that yeah. I've just screened out for that reason, but this is okay, because it's just, it's about a sort of season two no, sort I agree. of issue, a vibe. There, there's so, I mean, look, I guess, um, when you think back, you've got James Purefoy, who's coming in to play Philippe. I mean, I think Philippe is such an enigma to all of us. Um, and he informs so much about Matthew's behavior. And as a result, the most important relationship in many ways in the, in the show is Diane and Matthew. So mm -hmm. for me, seeing um, Philippe just tells so much about the psychology of Matthew and therefore the, 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 the dynamic that exists between Matthew and Diana. So that was um, one of my favorites, but I think the thrill to see Sheila Hancock play Goody Allsop, it just fills me with glee every time. Every, um, when, I, when we watched the trailer and they said, the most powerful witch, and there she was, I was like, oh, she's so perfect. And yeah, she's <laughs> phenomenal. And uh, you know, she just exudes so many qualities as the mentor to Diana. Um, and it's just such a, a wise head on those great shoulders. Um, and the chemistry between Diana and Goody is really strong. So I think um, we've just been completely blessed yeah. uh, in Sheila coming on board. But speaking of chemistry, <laughs> Adele and Edward. Oh gosh, I mean, they're dynamite. Phoebe and Marcus, uh, you know, it, you can never really know for sure that the chemistry is going to work. But literally, I, I loved watching the dailies that were the scenes with Phoebe and Marcus because they had such amazing um, chemistry uh, between them. And I have to say, there's Gallo Glass. Yeah, yeah. Huge fan favorite. We know all of you are looking forward to seeing Gallo Glass. Uh, and so when Stephen Cree took on the role, I was so grateful. Um, I kept threatening Lachlan that if we couldn't find the right one, we were just going to have to prop him up in a corner and make him do it and say <laughs> ante every five minutes just to kind of get that in there uh, because he's got the right look and the right accent. But uh, I'm sure that Lachlan is glad that we were able to get Stephen Cree to join us. And he is just 
perfect um, as Gallo glass, so much so that now when I write and I'm writing Gallo glasses dialogue in my head, I haven't even told him this yet. Now I hear Stephen. That's amazing. So those are all imaginary characters. It's also, of course, one of the, the great uh, characters in second series is based on a real person, Christopher Marlowe. So seeing Tom Hughes do Kit Marlowe is such a treat uh, in his black outfit and being mad, bad, and dangerous to know. He cuts quite a silhouette, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he really does. He really does. And then, of course, we have Paul Rees playing Andrew Hubbard. He's mesmerizing. Yeah. I mean, incredible. The vampire king of London come to life. So, you know, it's hard to pick and choose. It's a, it really is like picking your favorite, ch your favorite child. It, it, it's, um, it's the tip of a, of a wonderful casting iceberg. And um, the whole thing just came together so beautifully from strength to strength, really. It did, and I think a big part of that is um, Julie Harkin, our casting director, and Ray Henry, our casting associate, um, who just tirelessly fought for us to secure the best cast members we possibly could for the roles. Yeah. So here's a question for Dr. Harkness. Sarah Siegel asks, if Matthew and Diana had had an extra few months in the late 1590s, What's one more historical figure you would have loved to have them bump into? There's always a whole, for me, pile of people on the cutting room floor when I finish a novel. But the one that killed me was I just couldn't get Matthew and Diana where they needed to be in order to meet Giordano Bruno, the last man burned at the stake. And I tried so many different ways, but that is definitely the one who got away. So enough from us, we all know you really just want to see the cast. So we'll pass over to Teresa, Matthew, Ed, Adele, and Stephen. Hey, what's up Comic-Con? I'm Teresa Palmer. I'm sitting here with my friends from the show, A Discovery of Witches, a Sky original. Um, we're gonna try and give you some set secrets and talk to you a little bit about series two. We have Matthew Good who plays uh, Matthew Claremont. Yes, yeah. I do. Just about remember that. Yep. <laughs> good, good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are. And this is Stephen Cree. I'll pass it on. This is yeah, Stephen Cree. And you play? Gallo Glass. Very good. That's it. Very just succinct. Ga just Gallo Glass. Yep. Stephen Cree, do you know my surname? Uh, yeah, I know. Leons. <laughs> yes. Adele oh, 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 oh. Leons. Yeah. Adele Leons yeah. playing Phoebe Taylor and Edward Blumel. I play Dr. Marcus Whitmore. I love it. You had to throw the doctor. Yeah, that's. I think that's nice. Oh, put, I, I put the ties in. Do you have some? Do do? Professor, maybe. I, I like to fly under the radar. Oh, uh, <laughs> you can fly. I can hear people out there. Just can you fly? Yeah. Gallo glass. Um, Madonna. All right. I'm gonna ask <laughs> these punks some questions. I'm gonna start. Who wants to go first? Uh, Edwards, I think I heard. Yeah, I did. Actually. I did. I made it very Ed. clear beforehand. Yes, I did hear you wanted to go. <laughs> doctor <laughs> Edwards. Yeah. Okay, Ed, we have questions that people have asked us from Twitterverse. This one is for Ed. Janelle would like to know, other than the character you play, who is your favourite character on the show? Um, if I was to play another character, uh, no, not if I was to play one, sorry. Um, <laughs> my favourite character <laughs> on the show is um, Phoebe Taylor, because I think... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God, oh yeah. <laughs> I think nice. she's got a great taste in men. I, I think, think I do. Um, Which brings it back to himself. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, I've got a lot of respect for her just yeah. off that alone. Yeah. Uh, Didn't you say Marcus was very horny this season? Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he spends a lot of season two, um, where, where, whereas he spent a lot of ser series one sort of in a lab um, yeah. looking at different types of blood. He spends a lot of series two in a sort of more, yeah, a more sort of intimate laboratory. Sensual. Cree, yep. you're up. Okay. <laughs> Jackie Wright says, looking forward to your portrayal of Gallo Glass. Mm -hmm. That's a compliment. That's, yeah, yeah. But was there one scene, a favourite, that you'll remember forever? Oh. <laughs> uh, actually, what do you know what? What about the enemy? I'll tell you what, the, the one scene that I will remember forever that we were speaking about yesterday, uh, that actually isn't necessarily because of the scene itself, but because of what was happening outside of the scene, is when I was filming, uh, it was quite near the start of the shoot, it was a very hot summer's day, except it wasn't summer, it, wasn't it was September, <laughs> so it was the Indian summer. Indian summer, and uh, it was very hot, I was dressed all in leathers, 
we were on a little rowboat type thing, and <laughs> yes. I we, we were I in a castle. We were in a castle moat. We were in a castle moat about was, rowing. Should we not also talk about how and the and the, the wonder they expected you to the, be they, they expected rower. you to be the world's greatest rower. So we stuck you in an enormous <laughs> moat, and then, yeah, you had you had to Pretty row sure through rowing. lilies. Um, and the director was like, seaweed. you look like you're a little better at doing that. Yeah, you sorry, it's my first time. The yes. director was from I the Muppet Show there. at that point for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> the, director, I'm sure for you. the director was Ernie from the Muppet. <laughs> hey, Bert. Hey, Ernie. <laughs> hey, Bert, can you row the boat? <laughs> she expected you to be this master rower. Yes. And he had, ne had, had you rowed? I had never rowed in my life. That was like and even the professional rower that was there, said this is really really hard it was, weed. Right full now. Of weed. it was full of weeds yeah it was, it was full sucked. of weeds yeah <laughs> well, i think moving on was, um it was well that was brilliant <laughs> <laughs> what a great answer adele okay adele leon's thank you yeah. tell us tell us what do you love most about your character and this is from how do we pronounce rocio 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 or Rocchio. The question was, what do I, what do I <laughs> love the most? Love about yeah. my character. Or what do you yeah. like? You don't have to love it. Uh, like. I mean, she's just sassy as hell. I yeah. mean, that's just great to play because everyone's just so, all women are bored of playing like really vulnerable and boring characters. So that's really great to play. I'd like a bit of vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. You can, Give, you why don't we swap parts <laughs> in future? That would I be would great. I would love that actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, in this show. In this Not, show. Yeah, make the like, women strong. For this season. Walk through, door, yeah. walk, walk through a lot of doors and we'll get some vulnerable. <laughs> and that you can have this pink show if you want. Yeah, please. Okay, great. <laughs> do, you, do you have a love of antiquities like your character? Um, um. You just answered it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> the end. No, that's it. I mean, she's just sash, sassy. She's classy. I get to wear great Class, sassy, clothes. Classy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my wardrobe's great. Um, and I've never shopped in Selfridges so much, so that was pretty great. Right. Pretty great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's she's sick, so you'll 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 see. She find does her. have a great. She's always seen not to answer your question, but what I liked about her was yeah. nice to see a woman just coming with like I'm strong. Yeah, I'm strong. I'm, I'm strong. Yeah, she's strong and smart. And I'm yeah. strong and I have a great wardrobe. Let's have some good human representation on the show. As well. Yeah. I yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Just come yeah. on. Yeah, she's she's she's, she's 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 um, repping for the humans, so that's quite. Mm. That's, 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 that's there. That's you go. True commitment to the cause. Um, I'm going to ask myself the next question. Do Shall it. I ask it to you? I could. Yeah. How I would the book? prefer to ask myself. <laughs> okay, <that's> fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Take from that. Please what ask you it for right. me. Come on, Mark. You okay. come on. Ooh. There we go. It's over there. Teresa at yeah. Laidlaw Blue asks, what was your favorite costume to wear in season two? And I'd like to add a little subsection to that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was your least favorite costume to wear in season good. two? Oh, well, right. That's good. Well, yeah. right. here under the list. Okay, my favorite, should I start with the lead? No, my favorite yep. was um, when we went to visit Queen Elizabeth. You Do you remember sensational. that beautiful, I had sort of this, what was it? Like a peacock fan neck thing that was attached. Yep. Although the only problem with it it was very intricately done. There was like jewels and, and very beautiful wire. But it was it sort of like propped my head forward slightly. So yeah. I couldn't really look up. But it was worth it because it was really beautiful. Um, that one took them about three weeks to make. I thought it was lots gorgeous. Of Ice blue, yeah, lots of sequins, um, hand stitched. We did a lot of fittings. Um, Lots, <laughs> lots of fittings for that one. A long time to get into it. It did take a long time. How was, long? How long did it take? Oh, like an, um, I think my call time was two hours to get ready. What? Last wow. Season. Yeah. So yeah. A, it was a bump. And it was about an hour on, on the hair. So I had a hair piece and, which is so crazy. I didn't really need a hair piece. I have, I have yeah. a, a so mane. Much. But it actually made the prep easier. So they would um, weave the wig in the mornings and then sort of just stick it on. Peace. And then getting dressed took forever. There were so many hooks and clips and various things to get Probably on. Probably a good time to give a shout out to Al Pal. Well. I know, to I'm Alex. Sure. I know, Alex, love you. Yeah, she ACL, is. and she's a legend and made me laugh. And it was kind of, I'd say the least, my least favorite, those coats. <coughs> Do you remember? It was um, so heavy. So the getting coats on a horse. were so heavy. Getting, getting on. on horse. Yeah, so we had these amazing big cloaks with big mm. hoods. Um, and they looked really cool in theory and they looked great on camera. But we had a lot of scenes like coming in and out of boats and in water. And as soon as the mud got onto these coats, they would weigh like double 
Yeah, it was. And, yeah, it was also because Wales is obviously the holiday destination <laughs> beyond all holiday destinations. Yeah. It does rain quite a bit here, so unless you get here between the Tuesday and Thursday where it's actually sunny for the entire year. I know. Uh, or that, that those few days, then it was heavy. heavy. And then sort of lugging them up and over the horses and. Yeah. Yeah, but I love that whole sequence. I think that's probably my favourite sequence in the show is the journey when we got on the horses and we start galloping and, and the guys were fun and... go they were a good bunch to hang out with the horses. yeah we had great horses and anyway there we go that's the answer to Do my question answer, teapot. um goody it's your turn all right, mate. all right this question is for goody all now right. guys that's his nickname goody or mg um oh <laughs> all right goody nor rathor i love that name it's really cool asks does matthew think that there are similarities he shares with matthew de claremont what are they? Rodrigue. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> 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 I'm going to say. We both run a little hot. Temper. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look, well, we look remarkably similar. That's really but we yes. do. I, I run a little bit hot occasionally. Um, as the in, anger in the eyes. As in, yeah. As in, I, 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 like, flash rage. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get it in that Matthew is actually a, a, a loves golf, but they've been uh, <laughs> the writers are having none of it. Not really, no. It's the answer to the question. Should we move? What it about on? the stoicism? You can be quite stoic. Yeah. Oh yeah. MG, at the MG beginning, it depends. <laughs> yeah, it depends. <laughs> on a Monday, Tuesday, by Wednesday, he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, I, but I basically, I wish I was as uh, as. I had uh, many, more, many more of his attributes. Credence, your turn. <coughs> Tanya Peko. Hey, Tanya Peko. Says, which was easier, Scottish Highlands or 1590 England? Ah, uh, Scottish Highlands, I assume you're probably referring to Outlander, <laughs> uh, in which I put in an absolutely incredible performance. The word uh, barnstorming uh, has been used. Barnstorming, legendary. <laughs> Um, it's been bandied about by no one other than me. But I have a wooden leg in Outlander. Uh, <laughs> and oh my God. There's a lot of cobblestones <laughs> uh, and mud. Uh, so that was, that was pretty tricky. Walking through, I remember the first day on that actually, and genuinely I thought, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Walking through mud and over cobblestones, Ooh. which I do quite But a he lot was in really stoked two. because season two, he, you had um, your gun. Gu yeah, I had a sword. Yeah. had your sword, and you were really happy because you could put yeah, your hands on the sword. I could always just stand like that walked. in scenes and feel like I looked cool. Yeah. Like I didn't necessarily. I get, do you guys ever get that, that when you don't know what to do yeah, yeah. with your yeah. hands in a scene? Yeah. I just, I, they just hang limply. They by ha I know. And then you become really hyper aware of what your hands are doing. Yeah, yeah. I always think that when I watch Star Probably called bad acting, but. But it's the sign of someone that's been on stage for a while, I think. You know. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's like when you when you watch those shows where they don't have any pockets, Star Trek and stuff, they don't have pockets, so they're always standing like that. <laughs> and I think, I think they're conscious good, of that. It's a good thing. People do stand like that. Adele. You yes. get saying you. Leonce. I like, I don't even, I could wow. just get rid of the first name. Leonce. I mean, Leonce. I mean, I do prefer Leonce. Just Leonce. because Leonce. There we go. I'm in love with England's Leonce. Answer. There we go, Leonce. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Leonce Adele. So you speak French. Uh, so I think Wait. this person who wrote in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, I think this person who wrote in is a Matthew Good fan because the Twitter handle is at good shoes. What, what, what? Oh, he I like has a good like Twitter shoes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we know. Oh, is that, are they a fashion fan? No, good with an E. Is there an E off? It's a good with an E. It's a good with an E. It's all about that your gang. Speed. But Probably now they're a not. fan <laughs> of you, <laughs> Evie, asking you the question. Evie so, and me. Yeah, go on. Tell me that big a fan. It'll be yeah. Leon's <laughs> shoes next. <laughs> Thank God. Um, have you been surprised by the outpouring of love and support from the fandom? Or were you already aware of the fan base before you took on your respective role? Do you know what? In all honesty, I didn't really know how big it was. Um, like, my agent called me up and was like, oh, um, oh, just wait in. Let me just wait. Let me just wait. Uh, Saffron's getting on the phone as well. It's like, oh, why, what's going yeah, on? Oh, she's my sister. Agent assistant. Agent assistant. We share, oh, okay. we share the same she's agent. Great. Yeah, oh, she's, she's great. Oh, she's great. They're, they're amazing. Shout out to A good impression of Alex. Which agent? Well. Yeah. 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 But, but um, so Alex was on the phone. He was like, let's just wait for Saffron. It was a three-way call. Didn't even know that you could do that on your phone. So I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. Oh, this is good. Like, what's going fit. on? What's you going know. on? He was, like, <laughs> he was like, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Yeah, so I um, just wanted to let you know uh, that uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's gone your way. And I was like, what has? Oh, the, the the part the part. I went which one now? Because I've been up for about seven parts recently. What what? It's a discovery. Got it. It's yours. I was like, all right, cool. 
so yeah, what's happening now then? He's like, no, this is, it's good. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> it's, it's a shift. I was like, brilliant, cool. And so I was a bit like, oh, great. Didn't realise that it's a thing. <laughs> Didn't realise it was a book. Didn't realise I'd done no research. And then all of a sudden, yeah, I was like, oh, it's a thing. No. It's a thing. It's a big thing. Actresses. It's a thing. It's yeah. a thing. And then I watched the first se season. I was like, it's a thing. So, yeah. And then I got to yeah, it's real. Wow. It actually exists. So, yeah. and then oh, you're you like the biggest fan of now. season one. I love season one. That. I love how underwhelmed you were about that. I remember what, when I, 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 a, total, a total segue, but good. I think. Uh -oh. When I got a job years ago in the 300 sequel, I had auditioned for it or taped for it for one of the lead parts. Huh. And I didn't hear anything for months. Forgot about it. And I got a phone call from my agent out of the blue saying, oh, listen, by the way, they're really interested in you for 300, the sequel. Mm. Yeah. And I'd auditioned for Ischelos or something that the character was called. Ischelos. 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 And uh, in Scottish, it's Ischelos. And um, that was really bad. Sorry, can we <laughs> cut that? I'm slightly embarrassed at that. I'm cringing inside. I'm going to push on. I'm going to push on. <laughs> and, uh, and my agent phoned me up and he was like, yeah, it's looking really good. We'll know over the weekend. And then he phoned me up on the Monday and I just walked out of the gym. And he was like, great news, you got the part. And I was on the street and I was like, yes! I was like, oh my God, this is amazing, it's amazing. Because I thought it was like a lead part in a big film, a bit of like <laughs> career change. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could tell straight away someone's up. And he was like, ah, uh, uh, you know, like, like, did, yeah, did, 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 you, <laughs> did I tell you what, what it was? And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, it's not the part you originally went up for. And I was like, well, what part is it? And he was like, it's still a really good part. You know, it's a scene with Ava Green. And I was like, a scene? A scene? Like, yeah, yeah, but it's a great scene. Da -da 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 -da. And I was like, what's the character called? And he was like, um, decapitated Greek marine. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> My life-changing, career-changing part is decapitated Greek marine. And that is yeah. why you react the way that I do, because then it can only get better. Yeah, no, yeah. That's exactly. actually exactly. so true. Yeah. And it did. Mm, Matthew Good, this is from at Testa Rose's mum. What? Cool. Did Matthew and James Purifoy behave on set, or was it pure shenanigans? I, I, think, that's a <laughs> I think that's a difficult one for me to, <laughs> an to answer, really, because I always think I'm devast I mean, we had devastatingly <laughs> professional. Um, well, but I do love Mr. Jimmy Purifoy, and I, <laughs> and th I mean, there were some there were some days that it was impossible not what about to. The day? I was about to bring that up. <laughs> we were standing in an ancient Greek temple, and he's chanting in Greek, and it was very, there's, a, there's, a, there's a gale force wind going on, <laughs> and all the pillars of this place that were meant to be so we can realise they're not made of stone. And then there's a bloke over there who's who's who, this is actually how he was holding the smoke machine, who's spewing smoke <laughs> into the scene like this with a wafter. <laughs> Like that. And he's well, also, yeah. and when he's not got the wafter, he's holding the <laughs> head of a goat. <laughs> In our eyeline, like right as we're uh, trying to. You know, <laughs> like, I'm a pretty level headed kind of guy, and, um, and I absolutely wet myself with we laughter. And unfortunately, and then James had that, he was doing all the heavy lifting. He's he like, I don't know, I think. he was so mature, he did not break. He was Goody <laughs> and me off to the side, like, oh, just losing it. I had he to take a break really from the scene committed. for a while. Oh, God, oh, God. God. It, was, it was mental. <laughs> no, like, Jimmy was really professional, and he was like, these two, they just can't keep it together. And we just couldn't, but that's the problem with him. What? When he starts going, <laughs> I cannot stop. I cannot stop. Oh, it's but I think a problem. Because Jimmy was actually really taking part. He was He's leading really a scene that could, that could that could ruin your guess. career. Yeah. So I think when you know you're in those scenes, you really don't find it funny when everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> and you're I know, like, they oh actually God, like... this is the last time I'm ever going to act. Oh no. Money. <laughs> and you feel awful. I I don't know if this has happened to you guys, but. When it's someone else's close up, <laughs> Oh, yeah. And you've like, already done your close up and you like killed your close yeah, up yeah. on their close up. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get the giggles or you forget your lines. This happened with just, me and Greg McHugh. It's yes, sheer panic. Yes. Like yeah. it's the worst. It happened to me yesterday, actually. It happened to all of oh, us. There, 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 there was quite, there was quite a lot of that yesterday, actually. <laughs> yes. You know, there were lines going missing and stuff. And you just hear you just hear somebody go. <laughs> People You're suddenly the just doing really intense <laughs> looking at the ground <laughs> acting. It's when, some, it's when they go, well, okay, and that's it, we're over. And so someone doesn't actually get their close up. And you're both still laughing about it until the realization. And then they get, and you see the anger. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, I've got one for you. It's from Tam Baker. Tam Baker. What was your favorite and 
funniest memory on set. I love these questions, all behind the scenes. And I'd like to do a subsection of this as well. Always what was your lowest point? <laughs> <laughs> what was your lowest point? Yes. <laughs> Maybe My like lowest point. Learn, work I actually did have a really, I had a, I had a scene with, um, yes. uh, with, with Adele. Why are you where pretending that you had other scenes I just, with anybody yeah, else? I just, <laughs> In, in, in series two, I only had scenes with Adele, and um, there there was one when I, I could not get my lines right. It was in a lovely little pub in Oxford, oh, and I babe. could not get my lines right um, for so yeah. long that I really started to feel the tension <laughs> rising in the room. And the, the the higher the tension got, the worse I got I with got my lines, bad. and it, it it became a vicious cycle until until um. I was about to crack. <laughs> right. it, was about, it was really, it was really all Didn't about. Did you have a timeout? Yeah, I had to call timeout. Right. Like, no, call. and then no, it, it was one of those things where it just kept getting worse and worse. Yeah. And then he was like, "Actually, sorry, it's really loud outside. Like, yeah, there's yeah. a load of sound." And I was there's like, a "Lot of even the sound man's going what? <laughs> yeah, the sound man's going it's completely <laughs> silent. This is <laughs> and I was like, it's yeah. really loud inside <laughs> my head right now." Um, <laughs> I let you have that one because I was a bit like, no. So yeah, I had, um, I had, had, had a little time out. So that was, that was a low point. Okay, um, nice. High point. High point um, back to Leon's here again. <laughs> when, <laughs> when, uh, uh, when Matthew fell off his chair in the laboratory. <laughs> every time. <laughs> I get asked this question You're every welcome. time. They go, what was the I funniest don't know moment the, on I set? I don't know the story. But, but, but in the series one, I've we had, in the series one, we had a laboratory set that had that's stools really in it that, that like I don't know what, what they had like lubed up the seats with or something but like every time no, you sat on them you go really clumsy like and I, every something about I am the fabric clumsy. of your trousers as well no, yeah. oh, no created a um he's just clumsy because <laughs> it, it just kept happening over and over ah uh, that was really Wait, funny. So Matthew, <laughs> Matthew de Clermont you, you imagine is very very not a man who falls off a chair <laughs> no. yeah, yeah that's he's something he's had 1500 Matthew years yeah, to practice sitting in so is, you don't have that in common so, Ed, I want to know, what is your favourite moment of Monkey. season two? I know we said funniest moment of season one, but we've I, done that already. I actually can't remember. My favourite moment of season two was when we were up in Oxford and I heard that my best friend and housemate had oh, been cast yeah. as ultra villain Benjamin oh. Fuchs yeah. um, for Jacoby yeah. Van. He's brilliant. Um, He's really had been good. cast as um, no. as Benjamin. Hey, Goods, if you could time walk, right. where would you go and why? Lauren Humphrey would like to know. Um, why in your own life? Because That's I'm not. Question. Because I can only live All in right. my own life. That's oh. what she'd like to know. Oh, sorry, in your own life? Yeah, my own life. In yes. your own life. If you could time um, walk, where would you go? I don't. I mean, the romantic the thing to say would be to go back to the day that I which met was a great wife. day that I met my wife. And then we'd get to, and I wouldn't transport myself back. I'd just relive it all over again. But it was a but long with time that... ago. And um, it took a while for her to really like me. So, you know. <laughs> but it would probably have something to do with golf. I, could, I would go back and talk to myself uh, as a, when I, <laughs> everyone's like, and switching over. Um, <laughs> And, and, tell, and, and I would have become a professional golfer. It's actually <laughs> his dream life, is to be a professional golfer. I love it so much. And he looks at all his it. mates who are professional golfers and he's like, I would have had to have a serious change because I have, you know, I, I, referring back to that thing that I have earlier on where I have occasional rage moments. Mm. Can't really have those on the you golf can't. course. It's but yeah, that'd be my thing, Lawrence. Oh, hold on a second. Now, <laughs> Teresa, uh, the Chamomile and Clove podcast asks, uh, what is your favorite thing about working on an adaptation? Um, that's a really good question. I, please stop subsectioning because this you're going to say what's the worst thing about working on an adaptation. I was just going to say the difficulties of working. The difficulties, <laughs> yeah. Look, the the difficulties are a plenty. Um, I think when you have, should I start with that? It's a good question, actually. Uh -huh. It is. When you have um, very thick books filled with amazing information and um, rich backstories and wonderful. Um, engaged character arcs. I think it's very hard to um, adapt that into a screen because um, you lose so much of that. I think for me, I was I found it really challenging because the book series is done in Diana's voice, so we don't have any of that voiceover through the series. Um, so I found that I was there were moments where I'd, I'd be disappointed that certain things weren't being kept in the show, sure. um, and that's just you know, that's just the way it goes when you're doing an adaption. You can't include everything. And I think for the fans, it's been 
um, the series has been really well embraced. That's the most challenging aspect, okay. is that sometimes you have to sort of lose your darlings, the things that you connect to in the book that don't get to be there in the show. The best thing about filming an adaptation, well, I actually Direct really love having... Direct access to the author. That's exactly what I was about to say. Oh, get in. Um, I actually really love having Deb Harkness on the end of my phone to be able to answer all my questions about the character. She, she is Diana in so many ways. I really um, feel like there's so many parallels between her life and Diana's life. So I can call her up and say, what was she thinking? Um, what was her, you know, what was her arc in this place? And where did it come from? And just get beneath the words a little bit more. And I, um, I love having that access. One of the good <laughs> and bad things about an adaptation of a book as well is the, the expectation. Like, it's a good yeah. thing, but it's also a bad thing yeah. as well. Well, that's what I mean about um, uh, you don't want to let the fans down in any way. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they connect to a certain point of the book that ultimately doesn't make it in the show. And then... True. And Which as an actor, you can well. be just as disappointed about. Cause I know. We have... The Gallo Glass is such a rich, amazing, fan-favourite character from the books. And obviously, to fit all the different characters in, we all lose a little bit of that. Yeah. I suppose one of the great things is that it's very much a, a, we're a force of a, of a great big team of actors. There's a lot of yeah. characters to try and to try and put into it. So it's a, it is a, it's incredibly difficult to adapt. Yeah, you're right. It is really difficult, and I think we can all agree that they've done a really fantastic job. All right, I loved season one. I thought it was brilliant, and I've read the book of season one, so I think like, they have. They have done a really good. Well, yeah, they have done a really thank good Thank you, Stephen. Job. How do we describe <laughs> series two in one word? This is a question from Lauren Humphrey. You start, Ed. Horny. Horny. The whole season's horny. Just, just, just my two apps. Just, just like what said. In modern times, it's really I'm horny. I'm quite horny. The, mo the modern ones. Yeah, is so that much horny. Is Elizabethan one horny as well? Wow, there's going to be a lot it's of dirty. Heat. It is. It, dirty and horny. Dark. I'll take it. I'm going to say dark. Oh, dark. it gets dark. Dark yeah. and horny. Mm -hmm. Dark and horny. They're two dark, very horny. great words. Yes. I'll just add a bit of sass to that. Yeah, that yeah. Sass. A bit of sass. Yeah. If it's solid, it's a solid word. Well, solid word. <laughs> no, there's no, need, there's no need to mess about, really. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to hear Stephen's word. What is it? Gallo glass. It is gallo glass. <laughs> is this a, yeah, I was mm. going to go with that one, yeah. um, but I didn't. So, <laughs> great. I'm glad <laughs> you did. Got there first. Yeah, you really did. Hey, guys, I think that's about it for us right now. We have to go on film. Uh, season three, we're here shooting right now. Um, thank you for joining along with us and our shenanigans and our giggles. And we yeah. hope we were entertaining <laughs> and you got some answers. I've actually got to go. And Goody's <laughs> leaving now. So um, enjoy your virtual Comic-Con. All of our love from the team at A Discovery of Witches. We wanted to thank you all for joining our virtual panel today and can't wait for you to see the show in the UK on Sky One and Now TV in January 2021. And then in the US and Canada on Sundance Now and Shudder. <laughs>